Hey, y'all, it's Mary Hyatt, and I'm so excited you're here for this month's topic, which is all about emotional intelligence. Y'all, we are emotional beings, and yet most of us have no idea how to talk about our emotions, feel them, or process them. But don't worry, we have a whole month to make you an emotional genius to improve your relationships and your life. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Living Fully Alive podcast with Mary Hyatt, here to help you find your authentic voice, learn how to love yourself, and embrace your life. And now, your host, life and mindset coach, body love advocate, and doTERRA presidential diamond, Mary Hyatt. Hey, y'all, real quick before we hop into today's episode, I am so excited to share a new resource with you that I'm so passionate about. I have created an anxiety recovery kit for you. It's all for free. I'm going to give you three separate audio guided meditations specifically around stress and anxiety. And I even have one for panic attacks, plus a specific breathing technique proven to help you lower your cortisol levels and calm your stress and anxiety plus my favorite essential oil recipes for supporting anxious feelings. So follow the link below or head over to maryhyatt.com forward slash recovery kit, R-E-C-O-V-E-R-Y-K-I-T to snag your anxiety kit as a personal gift from yours truly. All right, now here's this week's episode. Hey y'all, it's Mary and I cannot believe it is the fourth and final episode of this month's topic of emotional intelligence. It has been such a fun month for me. I actually, gosh, I feel like I could literally talk about emotions for many, many more months to come, but man, what a great month we have had talking about the anatomy of emotions, kind of how it works in your brain and in your body. That was the first episode. The second episode, Lindsley and I got into emotional maturity. We talked about how to have a healthy, self-regulated emotional response when you get triggered. And then we had our amazing guest, Jillian McLaughlin, where my dear friend Nathan Afraida stepped in as my co-host to talk all about the science of emotional intelligence and how to really up that skill in yourself. And today, as promised, I'm going to be talking about how to feel your emotions. But I want to start with a simple and, I don't know, seemingly obvious kind of truth bomb. Surprise, surprise, y'all, we are human. (laughs) And because we are human, we have emotions. Sometimes we just need permission to be human. Like it is part of our makeup. But most of us have a, gosh, a lot of experience with learning how not to feel and perhaps have never even really been taught how to feel. I think that sometimes we believe our emotions are bad, that it's not safe to feel them, that we're bad for having them, that we are weak for feeling that. I have a lot of, I hear that a lot, that people feel weak when they have an emotional response to something, that we should suck it up, get over it, relax, be more positive, whatever. And I think also we instinctively want to avoid feeling our feelings or only try to chase feeling the good feelings. Like it's okay if we feel pleasure or joy or happiness, but we're not so okay with fear or anger, grief, anxiety, because ultimately those emotions leave us exposed and vulnerable. They are often really messy, not socially acceptable, they're inconvenient, they're heavy. And so instead of simply being with our emotions, we try to fix them, quiet them, get rid of them, numb them, avoid them, or simply just overcome our emotions, like kind of try to be above them, transcend them. And this is where, and kind of think about yourself when I give these examples, sort of where you fall in this example, but this is where we find ourselves eating when we're not hungry, you know, like emotionally eating. This is what, when we find ourselves drinking a few glasses of wine after a hard day, turning on Netflix to watch a drama filled show like The Bachelor, gossiping about our neighbors, obsessing about our to-do list, competing with our colleagues at work, packing our schedule so full that every single hour is accounted for, ending relationships after the honeymoon period, spending hours on Instagram. And y'all know, I mean, the list goes on 
and on and on. And all of these are in some way or another, like oddly sociably acceptable ways to avoid feeling. These are our coping mechanisms. We all have them. This is super normal. It's our way of numbing out. It is our way of not having to feel. And, and so to begin with this process, we have to recognize that in order to be fully alive, to be well-developed, to be self-regulating adults, we have to feel. Because anytime that we resist or avoid or stop feeling what is coming up for us, or maybe another way of saying it is like any habitual rejection of what's going on, this will cause suffering in our lives. Whether it's physical, whether it is emotional, in our relationships, in our self-care, in our ability to have a, a healthy life, spiritually even, I mean, it's going to affect us in some way. And it, it, what it does is when we don't feel what's going on, it also drives shame down into our psyche even deeper. It's just not a productive way of moving through our life in a way that gives us the opportunity to be alive, to process, to release. And instead, we end up living lives that are holding, stuffing, contracted, tight, small. It's just like the opposite to me of living full, fully alive. And so as these emotions come up and we say in some way or another, like this is not okay, whether that be when our intuition is trying to speak to us or we have some kind of pain in our body or like a body sensation, like a gut feeling or an emotion like fear or loneliness or shame or anger. And we sort of pull away or we stuff it. It's going to cause a delayed suffering. It comes out negatively. It comes out sideways. I mean, think about a beach ball. I love this example. I use it all the time because it's just so, I don't know, it's easy to visualize, but think about a beach ball. So when you have a beach ball and let's say you're in a body of water in the pool and that represents your emotions and you try to push down that beach ball under the water and there's so much force required, there's so much effort required. And eventually It cannot withstand that pressure anymore. And what happens? It pops up. You know, it's going to hit you in the face. It's going to splash water. It's going to hurt. And that is kind of what our emotions are like. It's like we can't keep them stuffed down indefinitely. They will come out. And it's intense when that happens, you know, or we completely numb out and we disassociate and we can't even experience joy anymore. It's like we've shut off all of our emotional experiences. So I want to help you learn how to prevent all of the symptoms, the complications that we get from avoiding dealing with our shit (laughs) and instead having a skill set to handle these emotions in real time. And it starts with learning how to feel. And I promise you, you can learn how to do this just like you have learned anything else in your life. And I'm going to teach you how to feel so that you can learn how to become comfortable with feeling the broad range of emotions, the rainbow of emotions, so that you don't have to stuff them, so that it doesn't have to come out in the body as pain or disease or autoimmune issues. And, you know, we talked a lot about that when we got into the mind-body connection a couple months back. So if you're curious about how emotions affect the body and how they get stored in the body and come out in disease and all kinds of complications, you know, go back and listen to those previous episodes. They're freaking amazing. But before I get into exactly how to feel, I want to start with one essential truth. And this is going to be important moving forward so that we can sort of open ourselves up to this process. And the essential truth is that emotions are our friends. And part of why we don't want to feel is because we are scared to feel what we're feeling. We don't know what we're going to find, how long these emotions are going to last, and really what is the point of all of them. And so I want you to think of your emotions, all of your emotions, like the good, the bad, the ugly, as a trusted messenger, a dear friend, like an ally and not an enemy. Your emotions are trying to give you a message, okay? So like their job is to help get you back into alignment. Think of your emotions as feedback, as signals, as information. It's not like a monster in the closet that is going to come out and scare you and take you down and you won't be able to handle it. Like their ultimate goal is to bring you back to safety. Now, sometimes they have an elementary way of doing that. 
It's almost like they're a little child having an emotional temper tantrum. That as you become more aware of your emotions, when you learn how to feel them, you will be able to sort of take their hand and guide them into a healthy response that feels really safe, that feels really secure, and is really constructive. And you you are going to be able to learn how to self-regulate. I mean, this is emotional maturity. So think about emotions as your friend, as your ally. And in order to feel the first, first, first step in the whole point of what I'm going to be teaching you about today is the pause. The first step in feeling is the pause. The pause here is so incredibly important. It slows down our fight, flight, and freeze response and gives us a chance to move back into our frontal cortex of the brain where our executive functioning can come back online versus reacting and responding from a place of survival. So this pause helps us to learn how to create a new tolerance for discomfort so that when we get triggered and and stuff gets comes up and we start feeling things that might be intense, we can actually pause to get to the root of what's getting triggered and offer ourselves what we really need. This process I think is really cool because what I'm about to teach you, like you can do this in real time, like in a matter of seconds as a quick self inquiry tool. And I honestly do that a lot. Like if in the moment, if I'm driving or somebody says something to me or I'm having a disagreement or a conversation and I find myself having like an intense emotional response to something in real time, I'm going to go through the steps I'm about to teach you. And it creates that pause. And it's like, okay, this helps me have a, a healthy response. Again, it's, it's quick. Or it can also be used as a dedicated practice where you physically will go and journal this out in a journal. And this is when you want to go really deep with something. If you start noticing like, wow, it's a pattern that I am feeling a lot of anger or I am noticing that I am consistently anxious or fear seems to be running the show in my life. When you kind of start to notice like patterns of emotions, this is a good time to take out the journal and you can do this as a deeper tool to get to the root of what's really going on. So I like this because it's, it's, One, a quick tool, but also it can go really deep. So depending on what's showing up for you, you can kind of use it in both ways. But the goal here is mindfulness and awareness. This is where we are going to move from having a trigger and just like, like reacting to having a trigger, pausing, and then responding. So I'm going to repeat that again because I think that's kind of cool. So going from trigger to reaction, like a negative reaction, to I have a trigger, pausing, and then having a healthy response. The pause is our key to sanity. The pause is our ticket to emotional freedom. The pause is our gateway to peace. So I'm going to share with you an acronym that I made up, and I'm going to go through the process of four steps in how to feel. Hey, y'all, I just wanted to interrupt this episode real quick to remind you to subscribe to this podcast. I know that emails get lost in your spam folder, so subscribing means my episodes come right to your phone. So go ahead, hit that quick little subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the Living Fully Alive episodes. Plus, in addition to subscribing to the podcast, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I don't know if you know this, but I have been releasing guided meditations every Monday over on YouTube, and you're not going to hear them here. So if you've been wanting to start an easy meditation practice, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on my short 15 minute guided meditations. All right, now back to this week's episode. And the acronym is BACK, B-A-C-K. K. And the way I like to think of this is it's like, come back. (laughs) You know, like when you get triggered, it's like, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. And when your temptation is to have that like total reaction, which is of course, like after learning about the anatomy of emotions and thinking all about that, it's, it, it makes a lot of sense. And because of this pause where we say, okay, come back, that is when we get our power back in our response. So B A C K. So the B stands for breathe. It's like when you notice that you are feeling something 
This is where we like to take a nice deep breath. This is about awareness. So this first step, breathe, is basically saying and acknowledging, I am having an emotional response right now. It's recognizing that you're feeling something, admitting that you are having this emotional response and naming it. Wow, I'm really anxious right now. Man, I am feeling so freaking angry. Oh my God, I, I am livid. You know, whatever it is, it's sort of having that moment to breathe, to notice you're feeling something. So you're going to ask the question, what is asking for my attention right now? What am I feeling? What needs to be experienced? And again, if you're journaling this out, you can actually ask those specific questions. But when you're doing it in real time, it's just acknowledging like, wow, I'm feeling this certain way. Naming that emotion, having that moment to become aware of like, whoa, this is happening inside of myself. So we have to breathe. And that really is the pause. So that is the B in our back acronym. So the second step and how to feel the A is for allow. This is where we give ourselves permission to be in discomfort. This is where we give ourselves permission to feel or we allow ourselves to feel what's coming up. And also kind of to acknowledge, usually in this step, your desire to bolt. Like your old patterns, your way of handling emotions and your past is going to show up. So whether that's to shut down, to run, to cope in your old ways that you typically cope. And this allowing is going to be new. This is, this is like choosing a new response, but you're allowing yourself to feel something rather than to cope. And you're giving yourself permission to be get honest. Like, all right, I'm going to allow whatever's showing up right now and to be present with it. This is where we meet our emotions, to be with what we're feeling. And this is important, like without any judgment or criticism. So often we immediately want to sort of criticize and analyze what we are feeling like, oh no, I, I shouldn't be feeling this, or um, I, I got to get out of this quickly, or this is a bad emotion, or this feels too vulnerable, I'm not supposed to feel this. But instead, if we can allow almost meeting the emotions with the word yes, like whatever it is, meeting it with the word yes, I allow myself to feel what I am feeling. I meet it. I allow myself. This is like so critical without judgment. So it's like, there's not good and it's not bad. It just simply is. So it's almost like we're taking the role of observing rather than trying to like analyze it, put it into a category, making it good or bad, right or wrong. We're just observing. I'm noticing, I'm allowing what is here to be here. And so a great question to ask yourself is in this moment when all that discomfort is coming up and you have that desire to bolt, Asking yourself, how can I soften my resistance to this and be present with what is here? It's kind of like reminding yourself in the moment, like, hey, it is okay to feel this way. I am safe. Like, this is just a vibration. It's going to pass. I'm going to get through this. Because sometimes when all that discomfort comes up and we have our survival patterns of fight, flight, or freeze or disassociate, this is when we have to allow ourselves to sort of speak to ourselves in a kind way to say like, you're going to be okay. It's okay. I am safe. I can hang into this comfort. It's not going to last forever. And really like be present for what is. So that's the second step. The third step is in back is connect. That is our C. This is where we're going to get curious. This is where we're going to connect with what is happening in our bodies and connect with what is happening in our thoughts. So we're connecting the physical sensation and we're connecting the thought loop of what is happening happening that sort of caused this type of emotional response. So we can ask ourselves, where do I feel this in my body? Like what does the emotion of anxiety feel like in my body right now? Like do I feel fluttering in my chest? Do I feel like I have an elephant sitting in my chest? Do I feel sick to my stomach? Do I feel weak? Do I feel hot? Do I feel um, a tingling sensation in my hands? Like having a moment to sort of identify what this looks like in your body, what this feels like as a body sensation. So we're connecting to that mind-body connection. And so then we can shift into thinking about the thought connection here. So connecting the thoughts with our feelings. So what is this part of myself believing 
Like where, where is this coming from? What am I responding to? What am I reacting to? And what I love about this inquiry is slowing down when we are asking sort of like, okay, what's going on here? Like my gut reaction is to rip somebody's head off or to go into defense mode or to be really angry or be passive aggressive or hyper control, go into codependency. Where is this coming from? You know, what am I reacting to? What is this really about? And what I like about that is that it creates some healthy distance from our emotions. So it sort of moves us from I am my emotion to I am having an emotional experience. It's almost like the thoughts in my head are, the sentences I'm telling myself are. It gives us a little bit of distance when we start to sort of connect with that thought process that's happening. And then we can connect even more intimately by asking ourselves this question, what do I need most? I love this part of the C, the connect. And this is, what do I need most? What do I need to do to process this out? So like, if I'm feeling lonely, do I need to call a friend? Or if I'm feeling angry, do I need to move my body and get it out of my body? If I am feeling overwhelmed, do I need to set a boundary? I'm asking myself sort of like, okay, how can I process this in a healthy way? Like for example, anger is an emotion that usually requires getting into our physical body to move it out. So I love like drumming. I love taking a tennis racket and like hitting it over a pillow. You can smash some plates. You know, it's that those are all way more constructive ways than like screaming and yelling at somebody. Maybe when you think about trauma, when something is a trauma trigger, what you might need most, again, is, is getting into the body, going to a restorative, gentle, easy yoga class, doing some breath work. Like those are both really powerful ways of addressing trauma. Maybe for anxiety, it's doing a mindfulness practice, a breathing technique to kind of slow the mind down. Maybe it's walking barefoot on the grass to help ground yourself into the earth. If you're feeling a lot of fear, maybe it's taking some time to journal and reminding yourself what's real. If it's sadness, it's like, giving yourself some time and space to cry. Maybe it's calling a friend and being with a friend. Maybe it's uh, investing in some nurturing things like a heavy blanket, a soft blanket to wrap yourself up, giving yourself sort of like unlimited time to just sort of lay on the, the couch and feel it. What is a healthy way of getting your real needs met in a constructive way? So when we connect, it's like, where do I feel this in my body? What, is it, what does this feel like? Where is this coming from? What am I reacting to? And then what do I need most? And so the last step in learning how to feel ends with that K of back to come back. And that is to kiss. And I love this one, like kiss it, kiss that little wound, kiss that part of yourself that is hurting, that is having this emotional experience, that is afraid, that is exhausted, that is overwhelmed, that is stressed out, that is fearful, that is depressed, that is grieving, like kiss it. You know, it's like if you had a wound and like a little, a little kid comes to you and like, mommy, it hurts. You're like, oh, let me kiss it. Let me make it feel better. This is where we bring our most tender, compassionate, loving self into the equation. Like how can you slow down to nurture, to speak to yourself in a way that you would like a little child to validate And oftentimes, and you'll hear me say this in my guided meditations, I'll say like, say to yourself, say to that emotion that you're feeling, I hear you, I see you, you matter. Like taking that moment to validate yourself and what you're experiencing, practicing just this compassionate self-talk, like really honoring what your emotion is experiencing, what your inner child is feeling and what they're asking for. And this is where it's like, whatever, whatever came up in the last step of connecting where you asked yourself, okay, what do I need to process this? Whatever came forward, part of this validation, part of this sort of like kissing it and making it better is putting whatever that is in practice, like honoring that need, like, okay, you asked for X, Y, Z. Now I'm going to meet that need. That is how we create trust with ourselves. That is how we create a secure attachment to ourselves. That is how we begin to rely on ourselves and know like, even though I'm scared, even when I'm feeling discomfort, I know that I'm going to meet my needs. I know that I'm going to be there for myself. I know that I'm going to show up in a way that gives me exactly what I need. In Tara Brock, one of my favorite teachers, she says, all any feeling wants is to be welcomed with tenderness. It wants room to unfold. It wants to relax and tell its story. 
It wants to dissolve like a thousand withering snakes that with a flick of kindness become harmless strands of a rope. It's like our emotions need that tenderness, need that almost like mothering energy to come forward and to kiss it, to love it, to be with the hurting, to be with the fear, to be with the wound and to sit with it, to invite it to tea, to listen, to hear Because so often we want to, like I said at the beginning, avoid it, dismiss it, try to move on, go to the next thing. And instead, what's so healing and will allow us to like move beyond it, move through it and get to the other side is really coming back, having that breath, allowing it without judgment, connecting to what's really happening and to the root of where it's coming from, and then having that moment to kiss to meet ourselves with loving compassion. And I, I want to leave you with a few journal prompts to get you started in this process to practice some of this new o- emotional awareness. And my hope is that this will crack open the door to invite you to start feeling. Because I think sometimes it's like, okay, where do I start? So my encouragement is to grab a journal Write these questions down and you can begin this process. And then at the top of your page, you can even write the acronym back so that as needed, you can practice those four steps to feeling your emotions. But you can start with these journal prompts. So the questions are, if I gave myself permission to feel, I feel sad that. If I gave myself permission to feel, I feel sad that. Or another way you could say this is, if I let myself admit it, I feel sad that. It's like getting honest with how we feel, giving ourselves permission and a chance to voice our emotions, to have an emotional check-in, to go, okay, what's going on? What's, What's showing up? What do I need to pay attention to here? So if it's not a trigger, you know, we're having these emotional responses to life all the time. Like we're emotional beings. So whatever's happening, even if it's not like a real intense trigger, we're still having an emotional experience. So this is just a way of inviting ourselves in to uncover what is right below the surface that we might not have our 100% conscious awareness to. So it's like, if I let myself admit it, I feel mad that. Or if I let myself admit it, I feel bad that. And then what am I unwilling to feel? What am I unwilling to feel? And whatever shows up in that moment, let's just say like my anxiety, okay? I'm unwilling to feel my anxiety towards blah, 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 blah. Then you can ask yourself, if my anxiety is a signal that something is out of balance, what is this anxiety trying to tell me? Gosh, you're going to get so much freaking insight from those questions. And then you can practice coming back. Then you can practice those four steps to breathe, allow, connect, and kiss. Because truly, we have to feel to heal. We have to feel to heal. So I'm going to leave you with this quote from Brene Brown, Mama Brene. (laughs) And she says, the opposite of recognizing that we're feeling something is denying our emotions. The opposite of being curious is disengaging. When we deny our stories and disengage from tough emotions, they don't go away. Instead, they own us. They define us. Our job is not to deny the story, but to defy the ending, to rise strong, recognize our story, rumble with the truth until we get to a place where we think, yes, this is what happened. This is my truth, and I will choose how this story ends. When we can truly come from a place of new emotional intelligence, new emotional awareness. It gives us our power back to redefine what is happening to us, to feel, to choose our response rather than responding out of habitual reactions that are from our past. And that, my friends, is living fully alive. Now, I cannot wait to be with you guys next week because we are starting a new month's topic. We're going to be talking all about confidence. Uh, Super excited about this topic. We're going to dive deep into all the facets of how you can show up with more confidence in your life. So make sure to tune in next week. And until then, remember, the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great and to be full. 
I'll talk with you guys next week. Bye. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you got some amazing nuggets to take home and start implementing into your life. And if you're looking for the show notes and links, head on over to maryhyatt.com forward slash show. And if you loved it, why not bring your girlfriends along this journey of becoming fully alive with you? Just give a quick share of this episode to your social channels and enjoy those debriefing convos with your besties. Thanks again. And I can't wait to connect with you next week.